going on everybody? It is Frank the Tank and I've got a question for you two-handed bowlers out there. Have you ever had trouble keeping your hand behind the ball at the top part of the swing all the way up until the release point? Well, I'm here to tell you that me being a two-handed bowler myself, I've had that problem for years and only just recently have I figured out how to correct that problem. And I'm here to show you exactly how I did it and what you can do in order to be able to correct it yourself. So check this out. Back in November of 2023, I remember I was uh, scrolling through Instagram and I remember that I stumbled upon a clip of Chris Sloan throwing the ball down the lane. And the thing that really stood out to me was how good he had his hand positioned behind the ball at the top of the swing all the way through the release point. And that was the other thing that stood out to me is how good his release was. And I was thinking to myself, Wow, that is literally what I've been trying to achieve for the longest time. So I thought maybe I should look into this guy's game and to see what he is doing to be able to achieve such a thing. And then I remember that he actually made the TV show for the 2019 USBC Masters. So I went on looking there to see if I could get a better look at his approach. And the thing that stood out to me there was his left hand, how he had it positioned on the ball when he lined up. And then I uh, remember Chris Vi actually does that exact same thing. And I'm thinking to myself, is that the key? Is that what I need to do in order to be able to get my hand behind the ball? And then I was like, okay, the next time I go back to the lanes, I'm gonna try doing this with my left hand and see if it'll actually help me keep my hand behind the ball at the top of the, uh, at the top of the swing to the release point. Now, this is actually what my hand looked like all these years. This is what I've been doing from the start of bowling all the way up to just recently. So here's my hand, uh, right hand in uh, like so. And this is actually where I've been having my hand. So like from my point of view, this is actually the left side. For you guys, that's actually the right side. So that's where I've had it. This is where Chris Sloan and Chris Vi would have their hand way the heck over here so this is probably like Chris Vi territory I think uh, Chris Sloan went like that or something so as you can see like my hand is actually taking that shape just like him just by doing this so that's what they did and I told myself that's what I'm gonna try so I never realized that all these years going like this even though this felt extremely comfortable to me this is what I like this um, this is actually damaging uh, my ball reaction this is actually hindering my release this is bad so uh i don't know if you can see like hold on, i'll try my best here but yeah having my hand there would lead to my hand actually being more like there at the top of the swing so uh take a look at this actually i have footage of it you could see there uh this was when i had my hand in the ball like i just showed you guys as you can see it leads to my, uh, my throwing hand being more to the, like the middle, almost, like between the borderline of the middle to the uh, going into the outside. In the end, at the release point, I would have my hand more going more up the, like the side of the ball. And that is bad because, you know, that, that it's just like Randy said, uh, he said, he said this uh, several times on, on the telecast, you keep your hand behind the ball, not up the side of it. That's not how you curve it. And that going up the side of it would lead the ball to flaring over uh, the, you know, over the holes. And that would ruin the reaction. If, if you like get it like a little bit of your track flare over the middle finger, the ball will still curve. But like if you were to get really up the side of it, the ball will flare over like the bridge or like, yeah, around here. And that would cause the ball to not even curve at all. So I realized that that's what I needed to change that. And that's when I decided to tackle uh, that change. So I, I moved my hand from here over to here, exactly like what Chris Vi and Chris Sloan would do. So I tried that and here was the result.
So as you can see, clearly it worked. So let's take a look at this in slow motion. All right, there we go. I was able to tuck, and you can see right there, my hand now actually shows compared to uh, when I had my hand more to the left side of the ball. It that That's part of, oh yeah, and you can see, uh, I'm able to actually tuck my hand, my, uh, my right hand a lot easier now and one thing I can tell you is it felt a whole hell of a lot easier like to tuck uh, to keep my hand in the inside part of the ball it felt like I had to I didn't have to put as much effort compared to when I had my left hand on the, the uh, on the left side of the ball so look at that that's the way it should be just like that and then in turn and still pretty much behind the ball it ends up going from I want to say maybe that's about uh, five maybe 430 all the way and then it's going to end up going I would say that's about 11 o'clock yeah so the fingers are ultimately gonna end up as the ball gets away from me going up this way that's the way it should be really nice and it ends up changing my axis tilt, my axis rotation. The ball flares away from the fingers and I get a really nice reaction. In fact, I think the ball even hooks more because of this. Really nice. I mean, my speed was a little slow right here in this clip because I mean, I was only just trying it out for the first uh, for the first time. So I knew and it felt weird. So I knew this uh, my speed was going to take a really bad hit on this. But the main thing is take a look at this clip. Look at that. This proves that it definitely worked. Look at that. Away from the middle finger. And I use the pro motion as an example because I, for the life of me, for as, ever since I got this ball, all the way up till just until I made this change, I could not get this ball to turn properly. All the track flare would always be pretty much over the middle finger. The, uh, I couldn't get this ball to work. And part of the reason was pro I, I was thinking was because maybe I put this layout and this kind of layout, when you put the pin above the, the bridge, this layout does not allow you any room to make errors with your release. You have to keep your hand behind the ball if you want this ball to work. Um, compared to like something like 60 by 4 by 30 where the pin would be more up here and the CG would be here. Kind of like this ball. This is actually, uh, actually let me show you. Yeah, see, this is 60 by 4 by 30. This, if even if you get your hand up the side, it's still, uh, most of the track flare will end up, you know, this ball will end up flaring properly. It allows you that that room to make errors with your release. But yeah, that's 60 by four by 30. Compared to that pin above the bridge, 60 by five and a half by 60 layout, that one does not allow you that um, room to make errors with your release. You have to get it right. So this thing that I did, that adjustment going from there to here, it worked. So, so yeah, look at that. Couldn't be any better than that. All the way around, clean, nice track flare. You have no idea how excited I was when I saw that it, it, it was working. This actually helped. Look at that, all the way around. Really nice. And away from the fingers, thank God. All right, so allow me to explain to you in a little bit better detail exactly what I did, what change I made. So again, like I said, I took a page out of uh, Chris Bai and Chris Sloan's uh, put whatever that was. And yeah, okay, I was here originally, and now this is what I do. So backing it up here. So what I do is I moved from here to about here. I keep like one way of knowing is my uh, middle finger and uh, ring finger are like in between my index on my on this hand right here so I did that and then I kind of like I, Vi does this like his hand goes in that direction like that I don't do that so I what I do is once I've got it here I kind of bring it over like that so that my hand now you can see it's actually taken on that exact same look that Chris Sloan has so yeah that's what I did went from here in between the index with my uh, other hand just like that as you can see about there and then I brought the hand instead of keeping it across like that I brought it up straight like that so it's going 
down. So that's what I did in that those clips that you guys saw. And as you can see, it worked. It turned out really, really nice. Good release, hand behind the ball all the way through. And the ball even flared properly, even with that layout that I've had the toughest time for many years with. I finally got it to work for me because of that. So that is, uh, I guess, the tip for you. Uh, if you're having trouble keeping your hand behind the ball, try doing that. Move the hand over from, like if you're doing what I did, like it, even if you have it, like if you have it here or even about there, move it to here to where your index finger is. Try it out. It should feel like, you know, like easier to uh, keep your hand behind the ball. It should feel like you're putting a lot less effort into it. It should feel a lot more comfortable. So yeah, that's my tip for you. Uh, try doing it. I hope it works for you. It worked for me. And um, yeah, uh, I hope it helps. So I'm Frank the Tank. That was my tip on keeping your hand behind the ball. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.